Welcome to Thrive, building healthy relationships for lasting success. Today, we wanna to talk to you about commitment. So I have a couple questions for you. What do you think about when you hear the word commitment? And what images or words actually come to mind? You know, researchers have actually identified two different types of commitment. There's constraint commitment, and then there's dedication. In Matthew chapter 19, some Pharisees came to Jesus to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read that at the beginning, the creator made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So there are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. You know, it's interesting. In the original language, Greek, that word united means to cleave to. It means to join fast, to cement together, to glue together. So we learn from Jesus that marriage is about unity or oneness, but it's also about stability. In Jesus' teaching, we see elements of constraint and dedication commitment. So constraint has to do with stability. Dedication has to do with the depth of a relationship. So some examples of constraint commitment would actually include social pressure. Your family or your friends don't want you to separate or divorce, so it keeps the relationship together. Financial pressures. Maybe you're afraid that you can't make it financially on your own. Or maybe you're watching out for the welfare of children. Hmm. Or maybe the termination procedures, you know, hiring an attorney and filing for divorce, it's expensive and it's a hassle. Or maybe you struggle with moral factors. You know, you just think it's wrong to separate or wrong to get a divorce. And you have concern for your partner's welfare. Or maybe there's just no better alternatives out there. But dedicated couples, they show agape love toward each other. Now, agape love is the highest form of love. Agape love is a self-sacrificing kind of love. It intentionally desires the highest mm -hmm. good for the other person. Dedicated couples show a greater sense of a relationship agenda. Your relationship is a priority. You make decisions for that relationship. And if your relationship's not a priority, other things will creep mm. in. Work, hobby, friends, they become your number one priority. So dedicated couples show wanting the future, seeing yeah. the future, desiring a long-term relationship, and you're in it for the long haul. So dedicated couples have this sense of we-ness, right? It's a couple identity. Now, you don't lose your own individual identities. You don't lose your own wants, your own desires, your own likes and dislikes. You're not enmeshed with the other person, but you're two people doing life together. It's a we-ness. Mm -hmm. You're a team. Dedicated couples show priority for the relationship. So in other words, greater priority is given to the marriage and to your spouse. And dedicated couples show satisfaction with sacrifice for each other. Mm -hmm. It's this understanding of, of a deep sense of giving. It's an authentic choice to give of yourself for your spouse's good. You know, it's interesting, but research tells us that in the happiest, most fulfilling, most satisfying relationships, it's actually people who derive pleasure mm -hmm. from giving to each other. So dedicated people think in ways that protect the boundaries of their marriage. They don't look for the other alternatives and they're not looking for plan B. Yeah, remember that love chapter first, you hear it at every wedding, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, Suzanne's gonna read it here in just a moment, but I want you to notice there's no ooey gooey emotional kind of feelings right. here, right? It's a, it's a self-sacrifice, it's a choice, it's a dedication. So St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Mm -hmm. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, and it love never, never fails. fails. You know, constraint commitment helps a marriage be stable, mm -hmm. but dedication helps a marriage be fulfilling. So once again, commitment is a glue. It's the glue that helps you through the ups and the downs. And it makes the relationship worth investing in. Commitment says there are no ifs, ands, or buts. Right. We're in this together. I'm not leaving. I am not turning around. I'm not turning back. You know, the truth is, mm. through a relationship over time, you have your highs and your lows, right? I mean, you have your great times and you have those times that it's not so great. But that commitment is constantly moving forward, constantly growing, constantly getting right. stronger. So how do you regain that dedication? In Revelation chapter 2, Jesus says, But I have this against you, that if you have left your first love, remember therefore from where you have fallen and repent and do the deeds you did at first. Yeah, it's a passage that talks first and foremost about our dedication to the Lord. 
But you know what? You can take that same model, that same passage, and apply it to marriage as well. Jesus says, remember from where you have fallen. Mm. In other words, remember what it was like when you fell in love. And he says, repent. Repent means you do a 180. If you're walking down this path, if you're walking down the wrong road, you stop, you do a 180, you turn around, and you go the opposite direction. And then he says, you do the things you did at first. I tell couples that all the time. Right. If you're struggling, if you're looking to regain your dedication, your commitment to each other, do that, that which you did at first. I mean, think back to when you were dating. What did you do? Do more of it. It worked the first time. It's going to work again. So making your relationship a priority, mm -hmm. my friends, it's a choice. It's your choice. It, but the choice to rededicate yourself, to strengthen your commitment, it's a choice that's going to pay off in dividends. Hey, you have a great day. God bless and live love.